In the tangled heart of southwest Florida, where the land is a labyrinth of water and shadow, a strange mystery was unfolding, one that would leave even seasoned scientists at a loss for words. The Everglades, with its endless maze of swamps and ancient cypress trees, has always been a place of secrets. But this was something new, something that would challenge everything the experts thought they knew about the wild. It was June 2025, and deep in the cypress swamps near Naples, conservation scientists were tracking a massive Burmese python named Loki. Loki wasn't just any python, he was a legend among the team, a giant among giants, and a crucial part of their research. Loki, a radio-collared scout snake, was used to find other pythons, especially elusive breeding females. His movements helped scientists map the secret lives of these invasive giants. But then, without warning, Loki's signal went silent. The radio receiver, once alive with beeps, now offered only static and uncertainty. The team, led by biologist Ian Bartoshek, pushed through dense vegetation, following the transmitter's last faint ping. Every step was a battle against mud, thorns, and the unknown. Under a canopy of pine trees, they found Loki's enormous, lifeless body, partially buried beneath pine needles, as if someone or something had tried to hide the evidence. The most shocking part, Loki had been decapitated. His head was gone, severed with brutal finality. It was a scene straight out of a nightmare, and no one could believe their eyes. This wasn't the work of a human. The scene was too wild, too deliberate, too perfectly hidden for any person to have done it unnoticed. The scientists stood in stunned silence trying to comprehend what could have overpowered and beheaded such a formidable predator. The silence of the swamp pressed in around them, heavy with questions. Pythons of Loki's size are apex predators in Florida, with few threats. They dominate the food chain, feared by almost every other creature in these wetlands. For an animal to kill and decapitate a python of this size was almost unthinkable. It suggested a level of power and cunning rarely seen in the wild. The way the body was hidden suggested a deliberate act, a behavior pointing to a specific type of predator. Something out there was not just surviving, but thriving and challenging the python's reign. The Everglades had just revealed a dark secret, nature itself was pushing back against its most feared invader. The balance of power was shifting in the shadows. The team knew they were on the verge of a groundbreaking discovery, one that offered hope in a long, desperate struggle to reclaim the wild. For the first time, it seemed the Everglades might have an answer to the python problem. The battle for the Everglades had just taken a dramatic new turn, and the mystery of the headless serpent was only the beginning. To grasp the shock of Loki's death, you have to understand the monster he was. Burmese pythons, not native to Florida, arrived via the exotic pet trade decades ago. In the Everglades, they found paradise, an endless buffet, no natural enemies. Their impact has been catastrophic, decimating native wildlife populations by over 90% in some areas. Pythons eat everything, birds, mammals, even full-grown deer. Despite relentless human efforts, removal programs, public hunts and innovative tracking, pythons continue to thrive, hidden deep in the swamps. The scale of the problem is immense, threatening the collapse of the entire ecosystem. Pythons became the undisputed kings of the Everglades, until the day Loki's headless body was found. For the first time, it seemed something in the wild was fighting back. The throne was being challenged. At the scene, Bartoshek's team became detectives, piecing together the story from every clue the forest offered. Each step was careful, every observation crucial. Loki's body wasn't left out in the open, it was carefully concealed under pine needles, a classic sign of caching. This wasn't a random act, it was deliberate, almost methodical, as if the predator wanted to hide its prize from other scavengers. This ruled out alligators and pointed to a land-based predator, one that planned to return for its meal. The setting, a dry, wooded area, wasn't typical for alligator kills, but perfect for stealthy hunters. Searching nearby, the team found Loki's head and neck, chewed off and stashed separately. The separation of body parts suggested a predator with both strength and cunning. The bite marks were clean and powerful, sharp teeth, strong jaws. The pattern of the wounds hinted at a skilled hunter, not a scavenger. The evidence pointed toward a feline predator, Tracks in the mud, and the way the remains were hidden matched the behavior of wild cats. Panthers were possible, but the scene felt smaller, more meticulous. The careful caching and the size of the bite marks didn't quite fit a panther's profile. Suspicion fell on a bobcat, an animal half the python's weight, 
It seemed almost unbelievable, but the clues kept pointing in that direction. Could a bobcat really kill a giant python? The idea challenged everything the researchers thought they knew about predator-prey relationships in the Everglades. To find out, the scientists retrieved Loki's body for necropsy and set up a trail camera at the site, hoping to catch the mysterious predator in action. They hoped the killer would return, drawn back by the promise of an unfinished meal. The forest held its breath and the camera waited. Every rustle in the underbrush could be the answer they sought. If the bobcat came back, it would be undeniable proof. The team watched and waited, anticipation building with every passing hour. The team was on the verge of solving one of the Everglades' most bizarre mysteries, a case that could rewrite what we know about these wild lands. All they could do was wait, as the secrets of the forest slowly revealed themselves, one frame at a time. In the dense humid darkness of the Everglades, anticipation hung in the air, every rustle in the undergrowth could be the return of the mysterious predator. The trail camera soon captured the phantom, an adult bobcat, sleek and confident, returning to the scene with a silent, purposeful stride. Its eyes glowed in the infrared, scanning the shadows for danger. The cat approached the cached remains and began to feed, confirming what scientists had only suspected, it was the python's killer. The bobcat paused often, ears twitching, alert to every sound. For the first time, scientists had documented a bobcat preying on an adult Burmese python, an event once thought nearly impossible. The footage was groundbreaking, rewriting what we knew about predator-prey dynamics in the Everglades. The bobcat whose own kind had suffered from python predation for years was now fighting back. This was more than survival, it was retribution. This cat had taken on an adversary more than twice its size, and won. The python, a formidable invader, was no match for the bobcat's cunning and agility. Likely, a recent cold snap made the python sluggish, giving the bobcat a critical advantage. The cold-blooded snake was vulnerable, its movements slow and uncoordinated in the chilly dawn. The bobcat's attack was precise, a bite to the head, severing the spinal cord and neutralizing the threat instantly. It was a display of instinct, skill, and raw power. This was not random aggression, it was a calculated hunt, a testament to the bobcat's adaptability and intelligence. The predator had learned, and it was evolving. The Everglades' native predators were adapting, learning to turn the tables on the invaders. Each encounter was a lesson, each victory a step toward restoring balance. The discovery electrified the conservation world, a symbol of nature's resilience and the untold story still unfolding in these wild places. If bobcats and other predators could learn to hunt pythons, they might become a natural form of population control, helping to curb the python's devastating impact on native wildlife. This single act was more than a wildlife story, it was a beacon of hope, a sign that the Everglades' ancient rhythms could still be restored. The home team was finally starting to score. Against all odds, native species were finding ways to survive and even thrive. The Everglades' spirit was not broken, its wild heart still beat strong, defiant in the face of invasion. The fight was far from over, but the balance was shifting. In the struggle between native and invader, hope had returned to the wild. The bobcat's feet is part of a larger pattern. Across Florida, native species are beginning to see pythons as prey, not just threats. Florida panthers, black bears, and alligators have all been documented preying on pythons. Even birds of prey like hawks and owls snatch juvenile pythons from the marsh. This collective response is nature's immune system kicking in. If these predators hunt pythons more often, their combined impact could be substantial. The ecosystem is slowly recalibrating itself, the home team is assembling, but this is no simple victory. The war between Florida's wildlife and the Burmese python is brutal and two-sided. For every bobcat's triumph, there are grim reminders of the python's deadly efficiency. Necropsies reveal native animals inside python stomachs, even bobcats. Every encounter is a gamble, a misstep can be fatal for either side. Even alligators and panthers risk becoming prey. The adaptation of native predators is a sign of resilience and desperation. The Everglades' new balance will be hard won, with losses on both sides. The real story is told in moments witnessed by those on the front lines. In 2021, a trail camera captured a bobcat raiding a massive python nest, destroying dozens of eggs, a strategic strike against the next generation. This act of nest predation shows native animals are learning to exploit pythons at every stage. For scientists, it was a sign of sophisticated natural biological control. 
During Loki's necropsy, the team found the remains of a native animal in his stomach, a haunting reminder of the ongoing devastation. The Bobcats' victory came too late for Loki's last victim. These stories bring the conflict to life, revealing intelligence, audacity, and the grim reality of survival. The Everglades is a wilderness under siege, Hope, this is more than science, it's a daily drama of life and death. The stakes could not be higher. Nature's defense is vital, but the war on Python still depends on human intervention. Scientists like Bartoshek and his team are the backbone of the resistance, developing methods to track and remove these elusive invaders. Their most successful innovation, the Scout Snake program, using radio-collared males to find breeding females. This method has removed thousands of pounds of Python biomass. The public joins in through the annual Florida Python Challenge, removing hundreds of snakes and raising awareness. It's a massive statewide effort. Citizens, scientists and agencies working together. Now, native wildlife is joining the fight. The combination of human strategy and animal adaptation offers the best hope yet. The battle is a partnership, technology, vigilance, and wild instinct. Together, they're turning the tide. The story of the bobcat and the beheaded python is more than a headline, it's a message from the wild. For decades the Everglades suffered relentless invasion and decline, now there's a glimmer of hope. The ecosystem is developing its own antibodies. Native predators are a new sustainable pressure on the python population. The future depends on whether these animals can pass on their new hunting skills. Will the next generation of bobcats and panthers inherit this audacity? The Everglades is forever changed but not lost. Loki's decapitated body was both a warning and a promise. Resilience is encoded in the wild. The fight for Florida's soul is on, and for the first time in years, it feels winnable. The home team is making a comeback. 